Hi there, crafty friends. Rose Grunewald here, and I'm stamping with you today in my stamping studio here in New Holstein, Wisconsin. And I have got a video tutorial today to show you how to make this beautiful springy card using the Brilliant Wings dies and the Oval Occasions bundle. <clears throat> now, I like to make simple, stunning cards, and this card totally fits the bill. I have lots and lots of video tutorials right here on my YouTube channel, so hit subscribe so you can have all my video tutorials in one handy place. You will love it. All right, let's get started. So here's another close-up of this card that we are making. We've got a lot of petal pink going on, and this card is just absolutely stunning and perfect for spring. Okay, I'm starting with a piece of petal pink cardstock, and I am just going to cut that in half. So we end up with a piece that is five and a half by eight and a half. We'll use that as our card base. And then I'm also going to cut a piece that is four and a quarter by five and a half, and that's the dimension of this card. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is a little bit of embossing. Um, now, this is the tin tile embossing folder, and um, this one is from the old catalog. So when Stampin' Up! updated their um, die cutting and embossing machine, they also updated their uh, embossing folders, but this one is from when I had my Big Shots. This is the Sizzix one. And um, you'll notice on the new <coughs> sandwiches for your platform that with these 3D embossing folders, it tells you to use this gray plate. Now, with your older embossing folders, that gray plate is not going to work. So, to run this through my stamp and cut and emboss machine, I'm just going to use a regular plate on top. And I just want to give that tip to those of you who maybe have been struggling a little bit to get the embossing folders that you have already in your collection to work with your new stamp and cut and emboss machine. I don't want you to worry that they will not work. They absolutely will work and this thing is amazing. So I wanted to share that tip with you so that you would be able to still use your existing supplies with your new machine. This goes through super, super smooth, absolutely wonderful, and look, the impression is amazing. There are absolutely no issues with that impression. <clears throat> All right, now while we are die cutting, I am also going to take a minute and die cut a butterfly from our Brilliant Wings dies collection. Now, this is part of our Butterfly Brilliance collection. It coordinates with a stamp set and some beautiful paper, but listen, this paper is only available while supplies last. So my goal in today's video is to show you how you are gonna be able to keep using this stamp set even after that pretty coordinating paper is gone. So I have the other piece of my petal pink from when I cut my card layer. And we're going to do some more die cutting. I'm using the largest butterfly die. I'm also using my old magnetic plate. Um, so you can use whatever plates you have on hand with your, um, if you had a big shot before, those plates will still work in the stamping cut and emboss machine, um, and I still use those. Cool, huh? Love that I don't have to revamp all of my products for this new one. Okay, I'm going to clean this up a little bit and poke out all these little pieces, and I will be right back. All right, we have got our butterfly all die cut here. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the detail of that pretty butterfly. <clears throat> okay, now the next thing I'm going to do here is we're going to do a little stamping and a little punching using our Oval Occasions bundle. This is in the spring bundle and it coordinates together. Some of these fit into the small circles, some fit into that big oval, and it is so darn cute. You can do a little coloring if you want to. 
There are also some solid images for die cutting. And what I love about this one is that it's gonna pair really, really nicely with those Brilliant Wing dies or the Butterfly Brilliance collection because there are a lot of different sentiments that you can use with those pretty butterflies. So I've got a scrap of basic white here and I am going to use the hugs and kisses sentiment and grab my petal pink ink pad. I am going to stamp this here on this scrap right along the edge. Good impression there. And use my snips to cut around this. Now I'm not worried about this being perfectly straight because I am really going to trim pretty close to these letters. I'm not really fussy cutting, but I'm definitely cutting a rectangle that's pretty tight to the letters that are on here, just like that. And actually, this isn't quite as straight as I would like it, so I'm just going to trim a little bit more off here. There, that looks nice. Set that aside for when we are ready to put our card together. Okay. I also have a scrap of petal pink and we are going to punch out this scalloped oval here. The reason I'm doing that is that as we assemble the card, I want to break up this pattern a little bit before I put my butterfly over the top. So I am going to start assembling my card front. Let me get my silicone mat here. I don't want to get glue all over. Okay, so I'm just going to glue down this solid oval, scalloped oval here. And I kind of line it up here in the center top third, I would say, of the card. And now I've got some of my white twine from the Snail Mail Twine Combo Pack. And I'm going to wrap that around and tie it in a bow. So I'm just snip the length that I need here. And I will just wrap this. And I'm going to tie this in a bow right on the outside edge of this scalloped punch. Try and get that straight, just like so. Okay, we've got that tied in a bow. My bow got a little twisted here, so be careful when you're tying not to twist those ends. I'm going to snip the ends of my twine here. And we are now ready to start assembling our card front. So, Fold my card base in half, burnish that edge with my bone folder so I get a nice tight fold. We're going to adhere this layer down before we get carried away with popping stuff up on dimensionals. So grab my seal and I'm going right along those edges because I want those to be glued nice and secure. And then I'll do just a little here in the center. <clears throat> now, what's nice is because this is exactly the same size as the card front, I just line it right up over the top and glue it down. So we have no border. It looks like our card front is just this embossed layer. Now I'm going to put my butterfly down here and what I have is the edges of some mini dimensionals and I like to save these and cut them for when I need to have a long kind of skinny piece. 
and I've got one for the butterfly head and that's just this little mini dimension is just a little bit too big so I like to snip off one little end there and tuck that in so that you are not going to be able to see it from the front of your card. You will pull those backs off and then I just adhere this in the center. I like to lay those wings down and pay attention to where they are in my oval piece. And there we have our butterfly adhered to our card front. And now I've got my sentiment that says hugs and kisses. I'm gonna grab some glue dots here. And I'm gonna put one on the outside one in the middle and then flip this around and do one on the other outside edge. And I'm just going to glue that down right in the middle of our butterfly. Okay, now we got to stamp the inside of our card. And so I'm going to be using these pretty little hearts and the really generic sweet friend. So I've got a piece of basic white here that is four inches by five and a quarter. And I've got my petal pink ink pad here and I am going to ink up these little hearts. Just like so, kind of right in the center. And then I'm going to use my black memento and ink up my sentiment. Okay, and I am going to hopefully stamp this straight. Ooh, I did pretty darn good. Just like so. And then we are going to glue that to the inside of our card. that. Isn't that beautiful? Very simple, very springy. We need a little bling, of course. We're not quite done yet. We're almost done, though. Um, I have got some champagne rhinestone basic jewels. These are in our big catalog, and these are amazing for dressing up these fun springy cards. Now, Whenever I use embellishments like this, I like to place them in odd numbers. So I'm gonna go with five this time. So I've got two there. I'm gonna do one down here, two, three. So I've got five total rhinestones to do a little bit of sparkle and bling. And there you have it. Our card is totally done. Isn't that beautiful? I absolutely love this simple card, but it definitely wows. Now, if you need supplies, I would love to be your demonstrator. You can shop my online store right here at www.rosegrunewald.com. Across the top, you'll see a link called Shop My Online Store. My host code for March 2021 is ADVD3TYA. So if your order is under $150, I would love if you use that host code. But if it's over, please skip the host code. You'll get your own rewards from Stampin' Up! when your order is over $150, and that will be amazing for you. I send a hand stamp thank you to everyone who places an online order with me, and I want to send one to you. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day and that you are creative today. Bye.